Hi, Mr. Sapone here, and we're going to look at a river problem because the river problem shows motion in two dimensions or two directions. Um, physics teachers, we love to give you river problems, and we just learned the tail to tip method, so we're going to be able to apply that. Um, if you have a river that is 100 meters wide from shore to shore, it's 100 meters, it's flowing at a rate of 2 meters per second downstream, so we can represent velocity as a vector, it's flow, uh, flowing two meters per second downstream in that direction. You want to cross the river at point A, so you want to swim directly across the river. Uh, you can swim at point eight meters per second. So you're going to be swimming across the river. We're going to call this the y direction, and we're going to call this the x direction. And this way, that would be positive x to the right, negative x to the left. Uh, positive y is going to be up or across the river, and negative y would be back that way. So the first question tells us or asks us, determine the magnitude and direction of your motion with respect to the earth. So we're going to get a result in. <clears throat> and hopefully realize if you swim directly across the river as the current is pulling you this way, you're going to end up probably downstream here somewhere. The current's going to be pulling you that way as you swim that way. And we can use tail to tip to get a resultant vector. So tail to tip is we start with one of our component vectors. We have two meters per second going downstream. <clears throat> and we take the tail of the other vector and attach it to the tip of the first vector. 0.8 meters per second. <clears throat> and the final rule was to draw in a resultant from the tail of your first ve uh, vector to the tip of the last vector. So your resultant's going to be here, and we could, of course, use Pythagorean theorem to figure out the magnitude of the resultant. Inverse tangent gives this angle here because that's the opposite side. And this is the adjacent side of this angle theta in here. So tangent is opposite over adjacent. Inverse tangent gives you this angle. And I have a much cleaner version of this because I can't draw very neatly with this pen. Um, so we use the tail to tip method to get the resultant. Um, two meters per second that way. Attach the tail of the other vector to the tip of the original vector. And we draw in our resultant. And of course, we use trig functions to determine the angle. And it comes out to be 21.8 degrees when you do the inverse tangent of 0.8 divided by 2. <coughs> and we could have used Pythagorean theorem to get the resultant. Or now that we know that angle, we can use sine, we can use cosine, uh, we can use, well, that's pretty much it, sine or cosine. Um, and that turns out to be 2.2 meters per second. So. If you're in a river that's flowing at 2 meters per second and you're trying to swim across it at 0.8 meters per second, your net motion is going to be 2.2 meters per second in this direction uh, with an angle of about 22 degrees with respect to the shore. So you're going to end up down here somewhere. And that kind of makes common sense. You're like a box uh, being pulled in this direction and that direction. You're going to go off in this direction. And our next question asks us, how long does it take to cross the river? And what I want you to realize is even though we get a resultant, even though the resultant says that we are going 2.2 this way, with respect only to the y direction, remember we define this as the y, you are always traveling 0 0.8 meters per second. With respect to the x direction, in the x only, you are always traveling 2 meters per second this way. So even though the addition of these two vectors, the resultant is that you, it looks like you're going off in this direction, we can still use these components of motion to solve motion problems. Um, if we are always crossing the river, just going in this direction, ignoring everything else, at 0.8 meters per second, this problem becomes really easy to solve. How long does it take to cross the river? Well, you need to travel a distance of 100 meters in just the y direction. We're not worried about that you're traveling this way. How far is it going to take you just to go 100 meters in the y direction? Um, and your speed exclusively in the y direction is 0.8 meters per second. So your distance equals 100 meters, your speed equals 0.8 meters per second, and you just use the speed formula to solve this. Speed equals distance over time. We know the speed, 
we know the distance. We kind of got to solve for T here. Bring T up, bring the S down. Uh, so it's going to take you 125 seconds to cross the river. Now, please note, you're not going to be right here when you cross the river. It's going to take you 125 seconds to be across the river down here somewhere. Because while you are swimming across at 0.8 meters per second, you are simultaneously being pulled downward 2 meters per second. And the net result is it looks like you're traveling this way at 2.2. So one of the hardest things to get our heads around is the idea that you can, even though there's a resultant vector, you can treat your motion separately, individually. You can look at the x direction and the y direction separately. And this is going to hold true when we launch a ball. If you launch a ball and it flies through the air and lands some horizontal distance away, um, we're going to be able to look at its speed in just the x direction and look at its motion up and down just in the y direction we're going to be able to separate those and look at them differently and it's going to help us solve a lot of problems it's going to take a few examples to get your mind around this but we can treat the motion separately even though we get a resultant the motion can be treated separately to make the problem easier so it takes you 125 seconds to swim across and the next question is how far downstream do you end up this question is worded a little bit poorly do i mean how far down here, like, am I looking for this distance or am I looking for this distance here? And we can answer both of these questions, but I'm kind of looking for this distance. If you wanted to swim from A to B, how far downstream do you end up? And it's, again, since we can treat the motion separately, this problem is really, really simple. Um, with respect to just this direction, just the X direction, you're always traveling two meters per second this way. And since we know that, and we know how long you're in the water, we know that it takes you 125 seconds. Time equals 125 seconds to get to the other side. And throughout that 125 seconds, you're always flowing this way at two meters per second. So again, we use speed. Speed is distance divided by time, and if we rearrange that, distance equals speed times time, or rate times time. Um, and I know your speed, you're always going two meters per second this way. And I know that you were in the water 125 seconds because that's how long it took you to get to the other side. So two times 125 is 250 meters. So from this spot right here, you will end up 250 meters. And of course, you could actually get this distance here because this is 250 meters and we know this distance is 100. So we could use Pythagorean theorem to solve for this distance. Um, so if you wanted to know your displacement from your original position, we could figure that out. But if we just want to know how far you are downstream <coughs> from the point directly across from you, that's how we do it. And again, we got to get into the habit of treating the motion separately. We can completely isolate this motion. We can look at just the X component of motion to figure out how far downstream we go. Because sure, you are swimming this way and the net result is you're going this way, but you can treat those motions individually to make your life easier. And this problem, problems like these will are much, much simpler because we can do that. It's going to take a little while to wrap your heads around it. And the final question is... Well, uh, actually, first it says don't misunderstand the resultant, and again, even though the resultant velocity is that you are traveling this way, uh, you can still you are still always and only traveling two meters per second in the x, and 0.8 meters per second with respect to the y. So that never changes, despite the fact that you are getting a resultant. The resultant is actually what both of these add up to if we wanted to express both of these as one vector but these are still both very much true and can be used um, so the last question is at what angle should you swim to end up directly across from a hopefully you realize that when you're doing problems like you probably got to swim off this way somewhere as you swim this way you're making progress across the river and the current's going to pull you down uh, this one's sort of a trick question and let's take our first vector we'll use tail to tip if you were to swim off at an angle like this and that's 0.8, that's your first vector. Um, and you were to connect the tail of this vector, because this vector is so much bigger, you would end up here. Your resultant vector is somewhere like here. 
no matter what angle you swim at here, you're never going to be able to reach the opposite side of this. Why? Because the current is flowing faster than you can swim. So even if you swim at a really sharp angle like this, the resultant vector is still going to be down there. Your, or your, your, ah, your river current vector is down there. That's getting a little messy. Let me clean that up. Even if you swim at a very steep angle, 8 meters per second, because you can swim at this speed. So instead of swimming directly across, you're going to try to swim at an angle, 0.8 meters per second, because you want to end up over here. You want the current. You want to swim this way so the current brings you down. You end up at this point. Um, the other vector right here, if we do tail the tip, the current still ends up down here. And when you draw in your resultant, your net motion is still this way. No matter what you do, you cannot swim directly across in this case. Why? Because the current is flowing faster than you. So no matter what angle you swim at, you will never be able to reach the point directly across from you. And another way to look at that is to imagine that instead of swimming directly across the river, you tried to swim uh, in a direction opposite that of the current. You could swim 0.8 meters per second that way. The current's taking you 2 meters per second this way. It's like being on a treadmill that's moving much, much faster than you can walk. So the net result is you're still going to be flowing downstream at 1.2 meters per second. <clears throat> there is no way for you to be able to actually reach this point over here. If you had a speed that was faster than the current, you would be able to draw in some tail to tip vectors where you could actually end up at this point. But we can't actually get there because we are moving too slow with respect to the river. So uh, this is how we solve river problems. Motion is often going to be in two dimensions. And we're going to talk about projectiles being launched. They're going to simultaneously be traveling uh, in the x direction and at the same time undergoing free fall in the y direction. So we are going to have projectiles, again, that are going to kind of follow a curved path. If you were to hit a golf ball, it would go like this. It's going to simultaneously be going up and down in the y direction and traveling vertically in this direction. And we're going to get those components in motion. And it's going to make solving kinematics problems much easier for us. Like how far will the ball land? How high will it go? So that's the end goal. We've been doing vectors and we start with these river problems because they're a little bit simpler than these, even though this on the first viewing might be a little tricky. But uh Hopefully, we're going to do a few more of these, so hopefully this helps you with your assignment and helps you understand components of motion. Just realize that you can always use the components of motion. Uh, you don't have to just use the resultant. It's actually going to be much easier to use the components. Mr. Sabone.